Breaking news. Russia suffers daily losses of 36 artillery systems and 22 armored personnel vehicles. On Sunday, the Ukrainian military asserted in its most recent daily battle report that Russian forces had suffered a significant loss of artillery units in a single day. The invasion of neighboring Ukraine by Russian President Vladimir Putin began in late February 2022, and the conflict is approaching its two-year anniversary, continuing for far longer than anyone could have imagined. The Ukrainian military has estimated that approximately 360,000 Russian soldiers have died and incalculable amounts of military material have been lost in the conflict. There is no updated tally of alleged Ukrainian casualties on the Kremlin website. Neither tally could be independently confirmed by Newsweek. Experts believe that these figures show a terrible condition for Russian forces, even though Ukrainian sources may be exaggerating them. The Ukrainian military's general staff updates its Facebook page with new counts of casualties it claims Russia has sustained throughout the battle every day. Even while the Kremlin has not commented on these figures and Newsweek has not been able to independently confirm them, they do offer an insight into the changing effects of the war. New information surfaced on Sunday claiming that Russian forces lost significant gear on Saturday. This weaponry apparently includes 36 artillery systems, 24 UAVs, and 22 armored personnel vehicles. At the same moment, four tanks were said to have been lost by Russian forces, according to the report. The article stated that 860 Russians lost their lives on Saturday in terms of personnel. The total number of Russian soldier casualties since the conflict began has now reached 364,730, according to the Ukrainian military. Action. Take action. Together, we can win. The truth is our strength. The general staff's tweet concluded Putin is trying to depict the fight in Ukraine as a confrontation with Western forces, according to a recent analysis by the US-based think tank, the Institute for the Study of War, ISW. This would allow him to justify the large army buildups and growing battlefield casualties. After Russia's failure to achieve substantial territorial gains in 2023 despite huge army fatalities, the necessity of such an ideological justification raises concerns about his intentions to fight in an ongoing struggle. Putin's statements likely suggest that he is preparing a long-term justification to keep forces mobilized and engaged in combat for the perpetual defense of Russia's sovereignty against the West, according to the ISW assessment. Putin is likely deliberately and falsely framing Ukraine as pawn without agency in the Russia-West conflict to mask his expansionist and maximalist goals of establishing full effective Russian control of Ukraine. Some of Russia's most famous people certainly awoke on the first day of the new year with a political hangover, the worst sort. Anastasia Ivlieva, a prominent influencer in Russia, unwittingly violated a new boundary in late December when she extended an invitation to the Russian pop culture elite to a almost naked-themed party. A significant change in the Kremlin's stance toward the entertainment elite is revealed by the subsequent incident, which led to the imprisonment of one partygoer and the pressure on others to provide groveling public apologies. This news arrives just as Russia is bracing itself for a pivotal moment. Next month marks the second anniversary of its full-scale invasion of Ukraine, and March brings the presidential election. Even during Soviet times, Russia's political center served as the hub of dissipation for the favored elites, thus the private party held at a Moscow nightclub on December 20, however expensive, was scarcely revolutionary. However, military bloggers started to grumble in dissatisfaction as revelers posted pictures online of their scanty attire which included skin-bearing undergarments, pricey jewelry, and plenty of skin. Within a short while, patriotic government officials provided their two cents. A time when our troops are dying in the special military operation and many children are losing their fathers, Yekaterina Mizalina, the ultra-patriotic head of the Safe Internet League, a pseudo-NGO, labeled the bash a cynical act. She went on to say in her telegram message that the party was like a shot in the foot to the government, State Duma Deputy Maria Butina, who was deported after serving a U.S. sentence for being a Russian agent, took up the cause and urged authorities to look for LGBT propaganda and attempts to undermine traditional values. 
The Mutabor Club in Moscow was raided by the police even though the patrons had long since left. Russia's attack on Ukraine coincides with a resurgence of anti-LGBTQ policies within the country, such as a new legislation outlawing the promotion of non-traditional sexual relationships. The government portrays it as a fight for survival in the face of deteriorating Western values. Supposedly, President Vladimir Putin was informed about the wild night. Images of partygoers engaging in oral sex with rapper Nikolai Vasilyev, stage name Vachio, who wore nothing but a white sock covering his genitalia, apparently offended the president, according to the investigative outlet agents. While defending himself, Vasilyev claimed that a Red Hot Chili Peppers concert was the inspiration for the costume. In a confessional video recorded while in detention, he made it clear that he did not support the LGBTQ community and had no intention of making propaganda for it. Still, a Moscow court fined him 200,000 rubles, about 2,000 euros, and sentenced him to 15 days for minor hooliganism, all for LGBT propaganda. A representative for Putin has declined to comment on the matter. It appears that the Kremlin is trying to divert attention away from the economic and human costs of the conflict and reign in the noisy urban elite by rallying passionate officials, the state apparatus, and patriotic vigilantes to intensify the clamor. The main aim seems to be Ivlieva, the party organizer with over 18 million Instagram followers. Two big advertisers deserted her in a couple of weeks, and she got a tax bill for 130 million rubles, or about 1 euro and 30 cents million. As for offending human dignity and propagandizing non traditional sexual relations in a public place, a Moscow court fined her 100,000 rubles. Some 1 billion rubles in moral damages are being demanded from her to be handed to Russia's military in another lawsuit, purportedly brought by a group of civilians. Ivlieva, who had earlier defended her freedom to wear however she liked, has now released a lengthy and heartfelt video in which she apologizes and asks for Russians' forgiveness. Her famous guests have been joining her in this trend. Russian entertainment industry heavyweight Philip Kirkorov admitted in his own video that everyone had taken the wrong door at some point in their lives. According to Alexandra Arkhipova, an anthropologist from the Laboratoire d'Anthropologie Sociale et Hesse in Paris, who spoke with Politico, such recordings of apologies are cropping up more and more in Russia as a result of the country's harsh crackdown on dissent. The point is to make them feel inferior and humiliated so they'll cave into the government's value system, the author writes. Nevertheless, the nearly nude partygoers were not spared by the public shaming, the revelers, some of whom had been regulars at the celebrations for years, were victims of a cultural purge reminiscent of Stalin's era, which resulted in the cancellation of their concerts the elimination of sequences from state-run television and movies, and the removal of their names from promotional materials. Ordorozno Novosti, a telegram channel, reports that the Moscow city authorities were even instructed to remove their music from the Christmas party playlists. Confronting the shadows the incident has been portrayed by Kremlin mouthpieces as evidence of popular strength, just three months prior to Putin's planned election to extend his leadership by another six years. Sputnik Radio interviewee Maria Zakharova, spokeswoman for the foreign ministry, characterized the uproar as the entire country resisting darkness. The ordeals that partygoers had to endure were not a punishment, but medicine, she said, but the most important thing is that Russia's creative classes can't run away from politics anymore. It used to be that Russian musicians and artists who avoided becoming involved in politics would either have gotten rich deals or just been left alone. Despite a number of thoughtfully critical posts on Instagram, this enabled certain members of the affluent urban elite, such as Ivlieva, to avoid the increasingly homophobic and conservative policies of the Kremlin, with the Kremlin so intent on keeping up appearances of normalcy throughout the conflict, it stood to benefit from this hands-off attitude as well. However, that time is past. Putin confronts a vocal but tiny number of ultranationalists who are angry about Russia's lack of success in the conflict and want an escalation, and the impunity of the elites appears to be a political liability for him now that the war has become the new normal, the nude bash of Ivlieva, according to senior fellow Andrei Kolesnikov of the Carnegie Russia Eurasia Center, is comparable to the mutiny of renegade mercenary leader Yevgeny Prigozhin in that it is an act of rebellion against the 
Kremlin. He told Politico, they violated the sacred rules of how a person should behave in wartime. While speaking to the publication. These days, it's not enough to simply refrain from openly criticizing Russia's military or the Kremlin, one must also publicly embrace a new wartime morality characterized by austerity and conservatism. A former minister of ECO.